Welcome to another episode of the Ball Guys on the Bench podcast with your hosts Graham Cohen and Scott Wasco. What's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Ball Guys on the Bench, a sports comedy podcast for the everyday fan by the everyday fan. Like we always do, Scott, when rambling together about sports, it's time to grab one and crack one. Cheers. Let's go. Hey, but before we do that, are you happy I said comedy this time? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes. I'm, thank you. Okay. Thank as long you. as I have your that was, goal, that's all that that's, matters. That's all that matters. I just want to make sure you're happy. <laughs> I so, just leave. Thank you for catching me off guard with that, by the way. <laughs> you're welcome. Grab it. Let's go. All right. Let's get this Sunday night cracking because, whew. Let's go, Graham. How was your weekend, dude? Dude, let me tell you something. Fourth of July is over. Praise the Lord. Wasn't too exciting. I was working, and as I said to everyone else, it was going to be slow, and it was slow, but it is what it is. But hey, this weekend has been good because even though it's early, but the real pros, it's time for fantasy preparation, bro. So you ain't wrong. Right now it's right now it's all about. Connecting with the old homies, seeing if we're doing, still doing the same leagues together, evaluating if I want to still be in certain leagues. I'm talking with a couple of people. Actually, even you and I are going to be starting a new league together based off a league that we're in that we co-manage already that we really enjoy. I, one of my other really good friends just hit me up about joining a league. So it's really just figuring out which leagues I want to be in. In the past, I've been in leagues multiple leagues there's times where i've been in eight leagues and these are not like free leagues like all of these are for money ranging anywhere between a 25 dollar league and like two three hundred dollar leagues that i'm in so it's really just figuring out what i want to do with that and then and in our league just getting all the getting all the nuances together so we can message the people try to figure out dates for drafts and just things like that but just draft prep baby just getting ready dude what about what I'm, as you were talking, I'm excited about this new league we're starting because it's a dynasty auction league that we're starting from year one. And anybody that's ever been in an auction league knows it's totally different than a snake league, snake draft league, especially dynasty where you got keepers and this and that and off season trades. I'm excited, number one, because you and I are starting it from our fa- my favorite league. I don't know if the San Diego league that you and I co-manage is your favorite league, but it's been my favorite league of all times. It's Just, definitely is. It's grown on me. I'll say that it's it, because it's, it's so competitive. It's so competitive. Yes. That's what I love about it. That's my favorite part about it. But having people that we actually interact with more than the San Diego <laughs> league is what has me excited about it. It is it is funner to play in a league that you actually talk to right. all the people that are in it. Look, we don't get me wrong, folks. Him and I are both on a group text with everyone else, but it's just half the point of playing fantasy football is what, Scott? Talking shit. Amen! Thank you! And with these people, it's just it's some do, most yeah. don't. And some people take shit with, too seriously. And then... Sometimes we want to say something to really poke the bear, but then it goes, it's just it oh. is what it is. AKA your boy. <laughs> Sorry, cook. <laughs> I'm not holding back. I mean, <laughs> is what it is. Week one, a couple years ago, I'm not going to quote what I said, but yeah, right. It was the chargers <laughs> opener against the Redskins and he said something and I said something back and Dan goes, Oh, damn. Scotty was at week six shit talking during week one. I'll say this though, because this is a league that like we said, we co-manage now. And the only reason that I'm in it is because this is a league that you have to be there for the draft. And since you started this league, I want to say started it, but have been in this league for multiple years now. The only reason I got to join it was because I needed to take your place to be there for the live draft to be honest. And so now doing that a couple of years now, I've only been, to, no, I've been to, a, I've been to two of them. I one of them was a COVID. Year. One was a COVID draft. Remember, yeah. One nobody was a COVID. could go to that. 
And then I didn't do, I couldn't do it last year because of Burning Man. But then we had that <laughs> that exciting string of events of what happened in the draft for you online trying to do that over over FaceTime, which was, I could imagine how ridiculous it was, but we can get into that another time. But I'm really looking forward to going down there and, as you like to say, lay the wood to these yeah. people. So that way I can be like, hey. What's your phone number again? Because half the people that's in our group thread of the 12 man league, I only have four names saved. Right. I have no idea who these other people are. So it's hard to talk shit to people that you don't know who is talking shit. So, I will say this though. That's half the fun of it. Cause I'm talking shit. And I don't even know. I'm talking <laughs> shit. <to you>. I'm <laughs> saying, <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> it is what it is. It's more fun. I don't care. <laughs> The only people I have the phone numbers of the people in the league that I care about. So the other ones, yeah, <laughs> hashtag don't care. They don't listen to the podcast. Yeah, it is what it is. Anyhow, <laughs> my weekend, it started off Friday. Obviously, I had to work Saturday and Sunday, whatever, yada, 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 holiday week. Right. It started off pretty cool. And if you don't know where I'm going with this, it's about the Knights and the Cup. Okay. <sighs> The Vegas Golden Knights are the first team in the history of the NHL to actually engrave the 52 people's names on the cup before the players all get their 24 hours with it. How's that possible? Oh, let me pick up my jaw. Hold on. How's that possible? What an I'm idea. I'm going to be honest. What an idea. I didn't, even, I didn't even know it was a thing. I couldn't believe it when I read it. And they made the decision because, all right, Graham Cohen, you just won the Stanley Cup. You get 24 hours with the Stanley Cup. You're going to Erie, Pennsylvania with the Stanley Cup for 24 hours to your hometown where all your friends, family, and everybody are going to have a parade for you. What do you get to show them now? Your name on the cup. Now, when each person has it, they have to take it in that big ass staging case that it's in. Oh no, there's a security guard that is with. That's his full time job, bro. <laughs> Hanging out with the cup. How do I sign up for that? It, yeah, how much does that guy get paid? I don't know, but <laughs> the guy literally gets to go to fifty two people's party to hang out with the cup. I love it. I was shocked. What would you I was shocked that nobody, no other team had put the players' names on it. And All it's right, not so, just players. It's not just players. It's front office. It's owners. It's athletic trainers. Right. It's everything. But 52 people get their names on the cup. If you had it for a day, what are you <sighs> doing with it? 24 hours. I can tell you one thing I'm doing with it, and I'm playing golf with it. <laughs> Shotgun in my golf cart. <laughs> Nobody's sitting beside me except for that big beauty. <laughs> Would that even fit in the golf cart? Oh, I'll have a seatbelt made. If I just won the Stanley Cup, I'm pretty sure I can afford a seatbelt, <laughs> custom seatbelt. It's definitely playing golf. What? It's hanging out in my golf cart. And then after that, there's going to be a celebration. You're going to be there. My family, friends, everybody I care about are going to be there. And we're going to drink a lot of stuff out of it. Mark Stone said on another podcast, he goes, by the end of the night where they won it, the first night they were in so many different clubs, it became a jungle juice of alcohol that was inside that thing. That's what oh would probably God. happen. Shot in the dark. How many 12-ounce cans of beer do you think that could hold? <sighs> I don't know, dude. 12-pack? Oh, I'm going to go with the over. <laughs> Hockey guys, they go beat the shit out of each other on the... On the ice, and then oh, they go drink. I didn't beer. say how much they. I didn't say that they couldn't drink, and I'm just trying to imagine the size of the bowl of the cup. Yeah. yeah, that's how my weekend started off. It was pretty cool. It finally, not that it wasn't real, but it was, it became real to see it. Our names oh, engraved on the cup. Trust me, it will be real for you when we see that banner at T-Mobile in on ten ten four months on ten ten on my mother's birthday. Yeah, but that's how my weekend was. It was awesome. My New York Metropolitans gave me a little bit of hope. They reeled me back in one stick straight. 
and then became the 2023 Metropolitans again last night and today <laughs> and just shit to bed. But that's another topic we'll talk about in a little while. But something else happened Friday night that was ooh, hyped up, ooh. right? And that was the NBA draft picks, number one and number two, versus each other in the yes. summer league. Summer league games. Actually, do you know where they play the summer league games? I think they play in Vegas. Oh. Oh, did I get good a little golf clap right there? No. Yeah, that was a very good. Okay. Very good. And after watching my boy from Spain, number one overall pick that got drafted by the Spurs, I'm still going to stand by my statement a couple of weeks ago and say Draymond Green is still going to put something on him that Ajax won't take off. What? He's French. Oh, it's French. Whatever. French, Spain, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Let's go! Man, whatever. <laughs> Don't care. She's from France where the ladies don't wear any underpants. Don't care. Let's go. Yes, sir. Whatever. <laughs> don't care. He's still going to be a dud. Even though as we're recording this, he scored 27 points tonight. Yeah, whatever. Don't care. Yeah, those are terrible numbers. <laughs> whatever. He got posterized, dude. He got dunked on hard in his first game. Hey. People are comparing him to the most... <sighs> Whatever. I'm just going to shut up. It's NBA. I don't care. I'm not even going to talk about it. Whoa, I do whoa. care. I do care. Shot fired. I do care, but whatever, dude. You got posterized and... Fam, I'm going to tell you something. Might be a shocker. Everyone in the NBA has gotten posterized at least once. I'm not disagreeing. But not but. when you're not when you're the most <laughs> yeah. talked about what? most. What's the word I'm looking for? I can't even think of the word since LeBron. Yeah, he's the great white hype, not white hype, but he's the next big thing, the next big deal. Uh, okay. I, look, yeah. when... you know what else is the next big deal? <laughs> the guy that the Pittsburgh Pirates drafted that we'll see in four years. I couldn't even tell you his <laughs> name. Come on, dude. It is what it is, dude. <laughs> Yeah, shots fired, whatever. I don't know. I'm just going to fall on the hate squad just because <laughs> the guy's seven foot four and he weighs 210 pounds and he has probably a size 30 inch waist. Come on, baby gap called and they want their clothes back. <laughs> Come on, put some weight on, bro. Eat some meat and potatoes. Like, you're going to get destroyed in the NBA. Like I said, Draymond Green is going to just put his ass into you, block you out, and he's going to get every rebound. Game, set, match. Yeah, and then he'll just go, oh, I'm going to reach over you. Thank you. You, you got to get the ball first. Oh, hey. Wait Anyhow. and see. Let's wait yeah, and see. Yeah, I know. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm just agreeing with critics that I normally disagree with, which is weird. Wow. Because I'm not a fan of this guy. I, I think for no reason, but I, it's, I, I don't know. I it's think a lot same, of it just because. No, it's for no reason. Yeah, you're 100% right. It's the same reason that you backed the live tour back in those days when we were debating Whoa, that. whoa, 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 no. Because that, whoa, you did it whoa, for the podcast. Whoa, I'm doing it for the podcast. Whoa. Two very completely different things. There, I actually had a stance. You're just blowing smoke into the wind. Did benefits come from the merger? We'll see. All right, then. That's all I'm saying. We'll see. Not, you know, I wasn't blowing any smoke, so. But as we transition in the next topic, do you know who <laughs> hosted their first women's major championship this week? First ever. I couldn't believe it. In what one sport? The, in golf. Women's major oh, championship. Well, one, of the, one of the most iconic venues in the sport of golf that you and I love. I know Pebble. I'm just busting your chops. Yeah, I know Pebble beach dude hosted their first women's major championship. Good for them. Right. Amazing. I mean, I'm not saying it like that. I'm just saying. But... Yeah. And something that yeah. was funny. My dad even mentioned it from our podcast a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about the U S open at LA country club. And we were talking about the coldest, what it was. I forget the saying, the coldest, 
summer I ever spent was in San Francisco. Did you see how cold it was up there on the Monterey Peninsula with these chicks playing golf in July? Bro. I've been living in California for a little over 10 plus years. And this is Southern California. Now, obviously where we met in Temecula, right. which is yeah. more desert area, consistent every day. Right. Oh, it's a hundred and sunny. Okay. Every right. day here in LA or up the coast. No sense is made. I, I like, yeah. especially this year, dude, it's finally now consistently over 70 degrees. And now the sun is coming out. So it doesn't surprise me at all. To be honest, the girls had on sweaters. It was 58 degrees yesterday. If you need a heat wave to come to Southern California, all you really need is Andy and I to come into town for a Charter Steelers Sunday night game and <laughs> then take an Uber an Uber where the homeboy doesn't believe in air conditioning and <laughs> you get out of the car you get out of the Uber car and you like have sweat stains all over your t shirt on a twenty minute ride. Like No, here's the best part of that. Do you remember what the date of that was? It was November. That's my point. <laughs> Why is it this hot in October, November, right. and September, but in June, July? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So anyhow, back to the ladies US Open at Pebble. Something that was pretty cool, pretty amazing. Michelle Wee, iconic, had all the press since she was a little kid growing up in Hawaii. Won the US Open. Married, actually, Jerry West, his son. They just had a kid probably about a year ago. And this was her last week of being a professional golfer. She retired from Hawaii. The girl that won, and this is why we all love sports, Allison Corpuz, I think that's how you pronounce it. Sounds about right. Becomes the second woman from Hawaii to win a major. In the same event where Michelle Wee retires. Pretty amazing. First American woman to win a U.S. Open since 2016. It might you know, be. How cool no, is that? It is. it is. I'm not going to lie. I forgot that. I forgot Michelle Wee was still playing golf. Granted, I don't think. She hasn't yeah. been. She hasn't this been. is like the, Phil War the farewell. Yeah. Yeah. But it was one of those. I was like. Yeah, I she heard hasn't that name in a while. Yeah, she hasn't been playing. Didn't she turn pro at fourteen or something? Thirteen? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was 13. crazy craziness. That's, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy. A fun story about I mean, Michelle Wee, dude. Uh, when I caddied in the two thousand six Women's U.S. Open for one of our cart girls at SCGA, Charlotte Mayorkas, who was an All American at UCLA. <laughs> Went to Newport Country Club in Rhode Island, and I'm literally on the putting green on a practice round, and David Ledbetter was her longtime coach on the putting green, and I'm like, oh, my God, David Ledbetter, Ledbetter is literally like two feet away from me. And remember, he was like the deal, right, growing up. He was like the, the coach of all coaches, and it's hilarious. He sneezes. And he's got shit all over his hand from sneezing. And I can see him like literally trying to cover it up and wipe it on his shorts, wipe it on his leg, wipe it on the grass or whatever. And some dude literally comes up and shakes his hand. And I'm like, oh, my God, dude, you just got David Ledbetter's shit all <laughs> over your hand. I'll never forget it, dude. I can see it right now on the putting green. It was hilarious. It was amazing. Yo, but, <laughs> hold my beer, bro. <laughs> Or 18. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I didn't resign. This is BS. You better yeah. reinstate me or I'm going to sue Dude. My... I'm sorry. Have another DUI, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> Anyhow, dude, just, you know, I don't even know. I don't know. I, I, that's another topic that's going to be hilarious <laughs> later on. Back to the ladies. I, <laughs> I couldn't believe when I heard about Jerry West either playing at West Virginia. I, hey, it, if you wouldn't have sung that song, I would have had no, that would have been the last. The only reason I know that 
is there's a golf course in West Virginia called Pikewood National. And it's one of the most exclusive clubs in the country. And I had no idea that it was until I was at Dove Canyon and a couple members were in West Virginia and they wanted to play it. And I called to try to get them out. And I was like, are y'all busy tomorrow trying to get some members out? And the dude goes, no, nah, we're not busy. We got two groups on the golf course. Two. Yo. Two. Is, isn't isn't there another pretty semi-famous club in that state? West Virginia? Yeah. Isn't the Greenbrier in yeah. West Virginia? Yeah. Yeah. That's but why I was going to say you worked at Greenbrier and then, no, yeah. no, I know that, but it, yeah. it's just funny. When I first heard you got a job at your, mm. at your former course and I was like, right. wait a minute, how can they have two of the same? Like, yeah. Another funny, a funny stat about that ship sticks, the company that ships golf clubs for people that don't yes. want to travel with them. How many oh, sets of clubs, you know, how many sets of clubs we got at my club that were supposed to go <laughs> to the Greenbrier? How heated. Dude. This lady called me. I'll never forget it. I've been there like three weeks, just moved across country <laughs> three weeks in. And this lady was like the secretary for some big wig at some casino in Vegas. And she was like, I sent the clubs to the wrong place. And I'm like, oh yeah, I know they're in my office. And she goes, I have to get them to the Greenbrier by tomorrow. And I'm like, ma'am, you better get on the phone. And she did, but it happened all the time. All the time. Yeah. I'd have been like, you better pull that plastic out and we're yeah. charging you oh, 2000 bucks. Oh, <laughs> three hour shipping. Thanks for playing. <laughs> three hour shipping. Wow. I'm I mean, surprised they found something that fast. Speaking of three hour shipping, you think you guys can send me a breakfast burrito from California? Three hour shipping. <laughs> By the time I put it in my air fryer, it would be pretty bomb. Yeah. Anything to make up for those breakfast burritos on the Blackstone. Oh. Oh, I was getting I was getting ready to say make up for the one that Andy did not get when <laughs> while he was enjoying his scones and you and I are like domination station and a burrito. And if we would have ate those burritos in the fucking lobby, like I said, there would have been no problems. But someone had to go upstairs and watch the games right away. Yeah, because that's pretty comfortable to eat in a lobby. I'd much rather go up to my boys' hotel room where I can watch the world's smallest <laughs> sports book on on iPhones, we got seven phones <laughs> watching the morning games while he's eating a scone and, and drinking stale ass milk. Yeah. What's more fun, Graham? Watching him be bitter Betty <laughs> or eating down in the lobby? Sorry, Andy. I, uh, watching you be bitter, bitter Betty. <laughs> you know what the best part of that was when we got up there? <laughs> we're trying to set up these other, t- we're trying to set up the other TV. We couldn't get any of this. And I'm just like, we could have been at my house. Watching, so we could have been watching this at my house on my 60 inch TV with surround sound. What the fuck are we doing here? Dude, that's two F bombs in three minutes. Hey, I, I know. I'm sorry. I know. It is what it is. Hey, it's, I'm we're not kid that friendly. Guy. I'm normally it's, that guy, not, and you're that guy tonight. Hey, w- w- when I edit this and it goes on pot and it goes on YouTube and it says, is this kid friendly? And I'm like, H to the LL, no. That's a negative, Ghost Rider. <laughs> so did you want to say this last stat about the ladies or do we want to just go on? No, I think it's pretty good. Just <laughs> because homegirl played her butt off, dude. She shot 300 today. That's good. 300. The other three players in one of the last two groups, seven over. Oh. Charlie Hole what? played her butt off. I think she shot 600 today. The Canadian chick. Wait, well, what's her name? Oh, I don't know, Charlie. I don't know. You're gonna make me smack no. I, I Dude. no. I don't know this person. You just said it so quickly. It sounded like I was like, wait, what did you say? Charlie Hole. Yeah, I think her name. Hole. H O H U L L. Yeah, Charlie Hole. So you Hull. smack yourself Hull. for questions. No, it's it sounded like you said Hole, not Hull. H U L L. I was. Yeah. Okay. No. Hey. I. There you go. I'm so, afraid I just misheard you. So speaking on the golf topic. Tonight, our boy Romance, caddy for Fowler, as we speak, on the way to the UK for the Scottish Open and the Let's Open. Go. Talk to him right before he was boarding his flight. He's fired up. I'm fired up. Graham's fired up. All of our boys that know him are fired up. We were chatting, and I go, dude, 
he was, I'm so stoked. I get to play Lynx golf and this and that. I sent him a question that's going to be on a future podcast. And I'm like, hell yeah, you're fired up. Especially when you bring this fucker home. Oh, there's my F-bomb. Oh! And I sent him a picture of the claret jug. And he's, let's go. And I'm like, dude, I don't care where I got to fly. Your boy's drinking a beer out of that son of a bee. And he goes, yes, sir. So, so let's can go. Can I get a would you rather? Oh. Can I get a would you rather? Now, is this self-explanatory or do I need to say it right now? No, say it. I don't know where you're going. Would you rather drink out of the claret jug with the homies or not even a debate? I know where you're going. The Stanley Cup. Well, yeah, we got to say it to say it. Let's drink out of the Stanley Cup with any player that you nah, want. Not even a debate. You'd already know. The- I thought so. I just wanted to make sure. You I know the answer. See how loyal you are. Drinking and out of the claret folks. jug. Drinking out of the claret jug with Romano and Fowler. And you, yeah, no, that's that, obviously the right answer. I was just making sure. If you make I mean, the cut I, I, with the history that we have with romance, if I make the cut, I'm just I had to throw that out there because it was great. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a rolodex of, of <laughs> things. If you want to go up and down, <laughs> if we, it's not even it's not even a question, dude. You know why? Because I would be able to drink more than one out of it. Than if I was with oh, fair. no, I, I would be all night. You know how many pictures I would have with that thing? <laughs> dude. <laughs> iPhone would be like Apple iCloud would be like, dude, update your storage. You have seventy eight thousand pictures in the last twenty four hours. <laughs> yeah, thanks for playing. Shut up. Here's three ninety nine. Hold my beer. <laughs> Actually, hey Claret Jug, hold my twelve beers. <laughs> Come on, dude. Yes. It's not even a debate. <laughs> Somebody that I've known since he was a senior in high school just caddied for somebody I've known since he was a freshman in high school wins the Claret Jug versus... Is that any good? A, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah, no, I knew leave the answer. I just, you know, yeah, just want to see how that. loyal you are. Leave it at that. Speaking of loyalty, Romano. John Deere happened today. It finished up. A lawnmower company? It is. It is. Just, sorry. It's definitely John Deere Green. I think it's a country song, too. <laughs> couldn't tell you couldn't tell you who sang it. I know it's the song. <laughs> Dude. You're unbelievable. I, the champion from the John Deere, Straka. Seriously, he's eleven under through fourteen holes. And one eleven round. under yeah, today. In the final round. Eleven under through fourteen. Needed a birdie on eighteen to shoot fifty nine. Yo. Do they like try to make these courses difficult or something? Or like how Dude, or, it's or the John have... Deere, bro. What does that mean? <laughs> it means I mean, I know what it means, but I'm just saying. I'm not saying compared to the open, yeah. I get it. I'm just yeah. saying, like at any look. As a professional golfer, you're good. I get it. But Yeah. I know what you're saying. At an at an accessible golf course that number is low even if you hit every gir and you're giving yourself those putts or not giving yourself but you're giving yourself an opportunity you still yeah. gotta make them. so either this dude's throwing darts and making some short putts or he's doing a little bit of that and draining a couple long ones too so i'm just saying that's impressive dude, dude like i just said 11 under through 14 he needs a birdie on 18. Good? He needs a birdie on 18 to shoot 59. Goes for the green, hits it in the water, makes double. He has a double bogey and shoots 62. <laughs> Wins by two. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question. How pissed was he? <laughs> About as mad as I am right now. Not at all. <laughs> That's my- You know why? Because I got that flag right there that says Stanley Cup. Oh, Champions. my God. And I got that Can koozie we... right there that says Stanley Cup Champions. Let's go. Speaking Let's of. Char- Can we get a Chargers W so that way we don't have to hear about oh, these dude. damn Vegas Knights? Dude, right. shut up. You're a fan. You're a fan now. Of what? The oh, Vegas yeah. Oh, the Pittsburgh Pirate. Pit- wow. Wow. There we go. Wrong sport, but thanks for playing. I know. I. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Speaking of which, before we start talking about the, it's 
Major League Baseball All Star Break, right? We got the home run derby tomorrow night. A weird, a weird thing happened tonight. I was talking to Graham before the episode, and he brought up baseball before I did. And that was because the Pirates had the number one pick in the draft. Let's go. And Graham, show me your hands. Do I know what his name is? No, it's the dude from <laughs> It's the dude Let's from go. LSU. Let's Get off go. the bag. Whatever. Hey, as you I don't said, know it either. He I don't know it either. Years. It's, yeah. Isn't it like Straka or something? That's like STD? no, that's the guy that won the PGA Tour event. Oh. So thanks for playing Smack Whatever. Again. It's. <laughs> <laughs> I was not supposed to be leading this. You hit you. God. I mean, when you start off a conversation about baseball, it's oh my god, did that really just happen? All right, now I'm kind of pissed off. Who is this? That guy? would be like me talking about starting off the conversation with soccer. Yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Speaking it's of which, though, cool. did the United States women beat Canada tonight? Weren't they playing in soccer? I don't know. I'm trying to be different than the normal sports. <laughs> this is, I'm not laughing out of disrespect, but I have no bleep. Sp- idea. You know what I saw today at work on a notification? Did you know who got killed that? today? This is a huge cheers. To the country that we live in. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me pour my beer. Hold, hold, yeah. hold. Yeah, grab it and crack it real quick. Oh, it's cracked. I just didn't pour it in my glass. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. All right, go ahead. The leader of ISIS got domination station. What? Yeah. I can't believe it's not all over the news, but... I dr- heard a drone, absolutely nothing about yeah, that. A drone dropped a bomb on my boy. And guess what? Mm. As Graham would lead off every episode, what do you say? <laughs> Dude, that's vintage. That was a good baba. Sorry like about your camels. Was... Sorry about your world, but guess what? You've terrorized my country long enough. Have fun in hell, bitch. The end. What is this dude's name? Um, oh, I was close. To Straka? No. Skinez? Skinez? Yeah, they started with the letter S. How do you, okay, how do you pronounce S K E N E S? I don't know. That's why I watched the Golf Channel for <laughs> 20 minutes to find out how you <laughs> pronounce Homegirl's name that won the U.S. Women's Open. <laughs> I don't know. All star break, dude. <laughs> hey, how much better would it be if the season started right now and we only had 82 games left? Seriously. <sighs> Dude, you wouldn't be miserable. You'd be all excited. We're Graham, starting now from Graham, fresh. Graham, I'm not miserable. I beg to differ. I'm not miserable. I, you know I, I have some text messages that could say otherwise. I'm not miserable. You know I why? know. If you wait, if you tell me you're high off your Vegas nights, I swear. I'm just oh pointing. That's all I got to do. I'm not spoiled like you and your Pittsburgh Steelers with 87 Super Bowls. Okay. Or the Pittsburgh Penguins that you claim First team, off, and you couldn't oh, even name four players on the team. First okay, off. whatever, just shut up. Okay, obviously, our listeners all know that I'm a Mets fan, I'm a Chargers fan, I'm a Knights fan. Two of the three make me miserable, and I have a hole in my heart because of them. But the Knights filled up a little piece of that hole. Yeah, well, the trifecta and, is coming. And as you said last night, could you imagine? No, I couldn't. <laughs> the one ain't happening, I can tell you right now. The Metropolitans that kick rocks. Bro, uncle, your Uncle Steve Cohen's about to have a fire sale and trade away all the people. I don't, I don't want the trifecta. And, folks, the trifecta would be, I said to Scott the other day, I was like, yo, could you imagine if you made a futures bet? And so it was for this past year and then coming up. So you got your Knights. You got your char- the Chargers this year winning. And then your Mets win. So, well, your Mets first and then the Chargers, all, all three teams. Like, wh- how happy would you like how elated? Like, wh- wh- how would you be feeling? And you'd be like, bro, did you hear what Kristen, nothing else. you remember what Kristen said? What'd she say? <laughs> He'd never make it through it. Graham, as we were just talking about, it's the MLB all-star break. I know it's your favorite sport. I know it's what your passion is, is watching 162 games and seeing what happened. Sheesh. 
Sheesh. But we're at the break. The home run derby tomorrow night. It's a fun event. It's become more fun for me because my boys won it twice. And my boy is obviously Peter Alonzo, a.k.a. the polar bear. But as we go into tomorrow night's home run derby, the cool thing about this to me is lately the seeds have been ranked off of how many home runs you've hit so far in the year, right? What? So, yeah, that's how they do the seeding for the home run derby. Wait, so you're telling me the I don't want to I'm not saying this mean, but you're telling me little man Mookie Betts in the three spot has the third most home runs out of these people? No. He's uh if you look in at In these notes he says number three. No, Mookie. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He has three. He's number three. Wow. Right? I didn't see Crazy. That yeah. <laughs> According to the betting lines, Alonzo, aka Polar Bear, he's three to one. Vlad Guerrero, Vlad Guerrero Jr. is five to one. Luis Roberts, six to one. Julio Rodriguez is six to one. And that's because he's in his home stadium because the All Star game is in Seattle. Garcia is seven to one, and Mookie Betts is 17 to two. And well, the if, good news is if you look, I recognize four of these names, and it's weird because I was writing the notes down, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, I recognize as you just said four of these players." Obviously, my boy Pete Alonzo. They said power rankings from MLB. Pete Alonzo is number one. Guerrero is number two. Guerrero plays for the Blue Jays. We all know that. Julio Rodriguez plays for the Mariners. I just talked about that in his home stadium. Luis Robert Jr. plays for the White Sox. No clue. I don't have my glasses on. Luis, oh, sorry, Adalas Garcia plays for the Rangers. Randy, I'm going to butcher the hell out of this name. Randy Arazarina plays for Tampa. Hey, that's pretty good. Did I not? Sorry if I didn't roll my tongue, Paula. Don't hate at me. <laughs> Mookie Betts yeah. is seventh for the Doyers. And this guy, if I asked you who this guy played for, it's not a, it's, I had no idea. Okay. I'm just going to ask you, I'm going to give you three opportunities to guess who this guy plays for. Yes. And that is Adley. I'm going to butcher this dude's name too. R U T S C H M A N. Rutschman. Adley Rutschman. Show me your hand. Mm. Stop Googling it, ass hat. Look, they're right here. What? Dude. Oh, dude, God. What I will never. Show me your hands. And show me your hands. <laughs> Rutsch, a- that dude, that Rutsch, whatever, that I just butchered his name. He's the eight seed. Okay. Who's he play for? Three guesses. It's not a smack yourself moment. It's just a guess because I would have no idea if I just didn't see it. I'm going to go with the Nationals. Nope. But close. I'm going to give you a hint. Close. And by close. Into proximity. Proximity. That was a good guess. Orioles? Good job. Good job. <laughs> So as we finish wrapping it up about home run derby, obviously you're not going to pick. Let's make a pick. Let's have fun with this. Yeah. Who's your pick? Oh, I'm taking Vladdy. He's due. He's been close. Yeah, he's been close. Yeah. So close and lost to Pete. You know what I mean? He he gets or he's been close. I want to take Vladdy. He's due. Okay. I like it. I like it. I I want to take the hometown guy. Or my hometown guy, Peter Alonzo. Oh. <laughs> but <laughs> that's what I don't know. But Peter is going up in round one against the hometown guy in his home stadium, and that's Julio Rodriguez. Peter's been a bust the last two weeks. Yeah. In, in my opinion, should not have been in this because he needs a break. But when you got Let me ask you a question. 
Hold on. When you got the swing that Pete Alonso has, I'm just going to go with it. I'm. T- you, you ever heard that term? You ever hear that term in males? It's mainly for males. Some females could say this too. I'm sure Paula may have said this before once or twice. Everyone needs a slump buster. Yeah. You're telling me that these lobs that they're throwing up couldn't be a slump buster for Alonzo? I hope. I'm just saying for his hitting for the rest of the season. He's second. He's been hitting a lot of bombs, but he hasn't been doing a lot lately. Here's a cool story about Pete Alonzo, though, in the Home Run Derby. He has his middle school baseball coach pitch into him in the Home Run Derby. I heard. And he promised him way back when that if I ever make it on this stage, you're going to pitch to me in a Home Run Derby. Pretty cool. Pretty amazing. Golf clap. But anyhow, as we are at the all-star break, I'm not going to read over all the standings that are in our notes. I want you to look over the notes and tell me uh, there's more than one. Give me. All right, yo, I'm just going to start with the first thing you're okay. I get the raise, but you're telling me the Orioles are only a half a game back. The Yankees, Blue Jays and the Sox. I get it. But the Yankees are seven games back. She, and um, this was as of last night, so these standings could be a game off here. I didn't okay, update them sure. going into tonight. But, dude, the Orioles have been on fire. <laughs> fire. fire. Fire is an understatement. And not only have the Orioles been on fire, but their AAA team that's here in my hometown, the – Tidewater Tides, now they're in Norfolk Tides. That's their AAA team. They're like blowing away the International League in AAA. Their talent in the system is amazing. But like I told you last night, <laughs> dude, when you finish dead last for how many years, you got to start hitting on some of these draft picks, right? Am I wrong? <laughs> Who else sticks out I'm to sorry. you? sorry. I'm sorry. What sticks out to me as I'm looking at this list is the person that made it, a.k.a. you. I'm looking at these team names. I'm like, who are the sillies? And I was like, oh. <laughs> Come on, guy. If you've known me I, as long as you know me and you don't I, know who the sillies are, then I need to I, question our friendship. <laughs> no, I, I knew. I just It's rare that I've heard you say that. That's what I was like. You know the team that sticks out to me more than any of them? Yeah. If it's not the Diamondbacks, I don't know who it is. Oh, they're a fake. It's the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, The Cincinnati Reds, bro. I know, but they seem like they're always, like, in it for a while, and then just are like... Dude, they're legit, and they're fun, and they're young, and they... The Diamondbacks are like a man with no arms. They can't hang, dude. The Doyers are going to dominate that division. Come on. Let's don't let's don't joke about that. What they I want to what I want to talk about is the Reds guy they just called up a week and a half ago. Ellie De La Cruz. Did you see what he did last night? <laughs> yeah. That's a big fat no. <laughs> Dude, Reds, the Reds are playing the Brewers. Okay. <laughs> Homeboy steals three bases in one inning. Go, oh, that guy. Okay. You said that. You mentioned that. Goes first to second. For them. Goes first to second. Okay. Then steals third. Not even a throw to third to try to even get him. And then in the same sequence as he steals third. The pitcher's like got his back to him and he's whining and bitching and moaning that there wasn't even a throw. My guy takes off for home. The crowd starts going nuts. The pitcher hears it, turns around and throws it home. Oh, yeah. Thanks for playing. Three bases, one inning, first person since 1920. What? I mean, 1920. Sheesh. And then he steals home. (laughs) 
and he's like celebrating with his boys. It was, if you haven't seen the video, if you haven't seen the whole reel that's, that's out there, look it up because it's pure emotion. And that's what I love about sports. Pure emotion. <sighs> Just saying. Something you sent to me the other night happened and I couldn't believe it happened. What's that? The Cubs' first win at Yankee Stadium ever? Bro, I'm not going to lie. So that headline came across, or that notification <sighs> came across my phone, and I was like, and I'm at work, and I was like, side station. What? How crazy is that? First dub in the new Yankee Stadium. No, in ever. No, that's not right. It's in New Yankee Stadium. There's no way the Cubs have never won. Dude, Yankee. remember, there wasn't a lot of interdivision or what? what's the word? The There wasn't a lot of National League versus American League baseball until recently. Well, if we remember this, this might be a smack yourself moment for next week. I didn't fully read it. I just assumed, and I could be wrong, so I'll admit it if I am. But I just assumed it was at the new Yankee Stadium. Because it's it's, for as long as the Yankees and the Cubs have been around, for them never to win in Yankee Stadium would be... It says, Cubs get first win in Bronx. I, I need to fact check that. Bronx. I just Googled it as you're talking. Uh, I don't know. The Cubs... It sounds suspicious. I'm looking me. at it. Dude. With their I believe three over the Yankees saying. in New York on Friday night, the clubs notched their first win over the Bronx Bombers at Yankee Stadium in franchise history. Franchise. Okay. Breaking a 12-game losing streak that dates all the way back to 1932 in the World Series. They've only played there 12 times? Remember, National League versus right. American League is not has not been in the history of Major League Baseball until recently. Hold on a second. Then why the bleep are there 162 effing games and they've only played 13 times in Yankee Stadium in 100 years? Get the bleep out of here. See, this is what I'm talking about. Baseball is ridiculous. This is it allowed ridiculous. the Cubs to fly the W for the first time against 27-time world champs. I, 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 That's crazy. I don't even know what to say to that. That's one of those stats where you're just like, wow, Your this is why I love sports. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, this is why I love sports. I I, I get it. Right? I can't believe I'm wrong. I, I just thought that was a new stadium. I had no oh, idea that no. was franchise. Wow. It's insane. Here, you want to hear another a stat that's not on topic? I got to find it real quick. If you're going to tease me, have it, bro. I got it ready. Simmer down there, fella. And it goes <laughs> Here, back to my... Beer while you're doing it, it goes Here, back to my night. It goes back to my nights. I think I might have sent it to you. Why is everything got to be about your nights? The last two people who scored a hat trick in the Stanley Club clinching game, Mark Stone this year, 2023, and Babe Die in 1922. So only two people. But here's the crazy thing about the stat. They were both born on the same day, May 13th. All right, fair enough. Another and the thing about that is they're just a day late from brilliance, dude. <laughs> May 12th right here. Come on, guys. May, May 12th, you're a day late. I know homeboy was 1922, but can we throw a dog a bone here? Like May 12th? <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> walked right into that. Yeah. Speaking of crazy stats, I actually heard something last night. And this guy, this kid, it was on a reel I was watching. This kid's doing it. And honestly, for a dollar every time this dude plays, and this is a nice little segue into uh, our next topic Shohei Atani. Oh, God. Can we not agree that best all around? Player, dominant pitcher, dominant hitter, right? How do you argue anything? So, 
me the point of me bringing this up is this there was this was a, a sports betting thing that i was watching and he said do you know what the odds are for shohei atani to throw a no hitter and hit for the cycle in the same game oh i have no idea but i can only imagine 22 million to one well would you not bet a dollar every time he that plays he pitches. that he pitches for that to happen absolutely how couldn't you yeah so like, you spend a like, hundred bucks in your life for a chance at 22 million dollars it's yeah. every time you're at the crafts table dude how do you not bet on the yo bet coming out yeah, exactly it's a That's dollar. what I'm saying. Like, I heard that and I was like, you know what? Here's my book. <laughs> As we go into the next topic, though, something I have to point out. My boy, Francisco Lindor, got shafted to play in the All-Star game. Okay. Met shortstop. Stat came out yesterday. And I was just like, wow. I knew it. he's... He had a slow start to the beginning of the year, but he's been playing his butt off the last month and a half. Only two players have 40-plus extra base hits, 60-plus RBIs, and 10-plus steals this season. One is Shohei. The other is Lindor. And they're both on teams that are above 500? I'm going to go ahead and say no. <laughs> but it's hard to make an all star team when you have 87 Braves on the National League team. But oh, I'm sorry. When you have four starters from the Texans or from the Rangers on the right. on the AL side, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I saw that and was like, What? Yeah, is that a typo? So, oh. as we're talking about Otani, dude, I know you're not a big baseball guy, but what's gonna Beep. happen at the trade deadline? Beep. Otani's Otani's got a blister. Beep. Beep. Hasn't been pitching. Beep. Beep. Trout's out six to eight weeks. Rendon's out. Otani's only batting. Bro, I can tell you the answer. I can too, and I don't like it. Beep. 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 What's with these beeps? Like, you're driving me crazy. You're making me think the refrigerator's open. Yeah. That's the Brinks truck backing up, getting ready. He ain't going nowhere this season because, and we said this last year. Oh, he's going somewhere this season. He's getting bro, traded at the deadline. I'll take a friendly with you. Done. He's going somewhere at the deadline. Why would they, why would a team give up everything for someone that they don't have full intention, not that they wouldn't have full intention, that actually has a chance to sign him next year. It's going to be, it's going to have to be a sign and trade. It's going to have to be. That's my bit. not a sign and trade? Then there's no point. Because the Ace, the Anaheim Angels organization, do they want to make money? Do they need to bring people to the stands? Because if your boy Mike Trout, yet again, see you later. Yeah. Six to eight weeks. Bye bye. Overpaid, you want fans overpaid to come... old ass Anthony Rendon. If you want people to come to the stadium so you can actually recoup some, make some money this year, there's no way you get rid of him. Granted, he's gone. You got to get something for nothing. He's they, gone. Look, he ain't re signed if they keep him and don't trade There's him. There's no way he's staying. No. In the, in the, no. No way. None. No chance. No chance. You know how many, I hate to say this, you know how many home runs he would hit in Yankee Stadium? Wh- whatever happened to that whole, his BFF plays for your Mets and the Mets are going to back up the Brinks truck? They are. They're going to try. Singa, well, Singa's made the All Star game. Our pitcher from there, and Epler was the. GM. I'm just assuming he's going to the Mets personally. I I don't think so. I can unfortunately, if I was going to bet on this, 
he's going to go to the Dodgers. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It would kill me, but. Yeah, it would. Because the rich get richer, right? If baseball wants to play by their stupid rules, then there you go. I mean, they don't want to have a salary cap. And like they say, when you're signing Otani as a free agent, you're not signing one player. You're basically signing one and a half. Yeah. You're which getting a pitcher and a hitter, yeah. Which we've never seen in our modern era. The crazy thing is, like I said, he's not pitching right now because of the blister. That crazy. blister will heal in a week. It's crazy. He'll dude. miss one game. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know, man. It's like I told you earlier, I sent you a text, a meme. And so the Mets are reeling me back in and then they started to shit themselves again in San Diego. Uh, I don't know. Any, I'm just going to go out and say anyone but the Braves. You know, who are incredible, have the best record in baseball. The Mets won six games in a row, and all we did was gain a half a game on the Braves. Like, seriously. Yo, (laughs) as with everyone, doesn't it come down to the same five teams? No. I could say yes. I could say yes. But both New York teams, Dodgers. I'm surprised the Padres spent the money that they did with who they have, which is hilarious with where they're at. Go figure. You could see the Astros spending the money. I could see, I see the Phillies spending it, and I could see Atlanta Phillies spending it. It's like six teams. The Padres. Are, Padres ain't spending it. I'm just saying. I they've been spending it, it, though. The Mets and the Padres were the two big teams that spent money last year in the offseason. And they're, what about the Giants? Eh. Yeah. It's not the usually Mets, their style, but. No. The Mets and Padres had all the big aspirations of having a good season, and they're two of the most disappointing teams in baseball right now. And yeah. the only thing the Mets have going for them right now is Alvarez, the catcher, the rookie. Scherzer got shelled today. Verlander's too busy hanging out and motorboating up to <laughs> You did not just yeah, forty year old Justin Verlander, or thirty eight year old. I had. To. I'd be mold. I'd be motorboat. Did you see how? <laughs> did you know how he met her? Do you know the story? As we end this episode, do you know how please, Verlander? Please, please tell me. And Verlander is a Virginia guy. Pitched at Old Dominion. Okay, I don't know if you knew that. Of course he did. And Upton was at one of his games. And he slid on into those DMs. Oh, what? <laughs> Can't make it up. So, as we end this episode, we've got half of a baseball season left. We got football, dude. Training camp starting in two weeks, bro. It's July. Right? Are you, oh, me? Are you kidding me? It's almost time for me to sing again. I can't wait for that episode. And the world was I'm ready for preseason. Let's go. <sighs> yeah, if you like kissing your sister, preseason football. But Hey, I'm sorry. Hey, I'd rather watch preseason football than any NBA game. Hey, are you going to be at SoFi for that preseason game against the Saints? Nope, and neither are you because you're probably giving away for the podcast. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. How do you like that? <laughs> Why you gotta steal my thunder? I was actually excited about it. Then you're like, yeah, that's a better point. Yeah, Dude, preseason right. football as a charter season ticket holder for 15 years. I was so excited to get there. And then once the game started, I was like, yeah. Yeah, sucks. but at least the good news is as a charger fan. You know you're going to have to – we're going to see the players that are going to play from week 7 to week 12 because half their team's going to get hurt. So we'll see the guys during preseason who's going to play in those games. And on that note, folks, we just became the bald guy on the bench, a.k.a. me.
Yet again, I'm a paying season ticket holder, so I can talk as much crap as I want, so... Whatever. Real quick, as we finish <laughs> up, have you seen the Dalvin Cook news? Would this ass hat just sign with somebody, please? I'm tired of yeah. hearing about him and Hopkins. Yeah. Hey, as long as it's not with the Dolphins, I can care less. Please, go to the Jets. Please. I'm dead uh, ass. Why would the Jets want him and pay that much when they got Hall? Oh. Because everyone wants a veteran. I'd rather have dude, some dude with this is legs. a two back. This is a two to three back league, is it I not? Know, I know. There's only, but... what, three teams, maybe four, that have first, second, and third down back? And Hopkins, so, can you just sign somewhere for two, please? Dude, he's going to Kansas City. I I, I don't know why. I, I don't, don't know why money, it's dude. So long. They don't have money. Dude, if they can finesse... The and I'll quote for you to make you happy, Kermit the Frog, and give him his money. It's, I guarantee you, they can find a way. They've already given him his okay. money. It's okay. some other guy that it's a defensive Bro. lineman that they need to Bro. restructure. Oh, I can't think of his name. Jo- Jones, right? Fifty-five. Possibly, I don't know. He's not going to Kansas I, City, dude. Okay, here's my thing. I think he's going Does, to the Patriots. He doesn't want to go to the Patriots. Does he? Do, do, is he worth the money that he wants? It's a great question. Second that's question: great, Are you paying? Question. Are you paying him more than what the very intelligent Baltimore Ravens overpaid for OBJ? I would pay him more than Beckham. Who's paying him twenty plus? The Patriots. Who has money? That the Patriots. He wants to play on a good team. The Patriots are going to finish fourth in their division. I'm yeah, going to go that. out. I'm going to go out on the limb right now. And we just made a handshake bet about something. I don't even remember what it was. <laughs> but <laughs> I already forgot. I, I did to too. Replay it. <laughs> I'm going to just go out on the limb right now, and we're going to make a gentleman handshake bet right now. Yeah, it let's says do it. What are you the, betting? The Patriots will not finish fourth in that division. Yeah, I'm taking that. Let's go. I'm taking that. Okay. Dude, there's no way they're beating the Bills. There's no way they're beating Miami, and there's no way they're beating the Jets. I'll take that all day. You're telling me... Hold on. You're telling me you have confidence in Mac Jones? No. I do have confidence in... (laughs) Yeah, a coach that's 500 at best without Tom Brady. His legacy is nothing without Tom. Okay. 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 Am I wrong? Okay. We're just going to throw that, leave that there? Yeah, we can leave it there. And, and while we... Do you have confidence in somebody? And I got to throw this out there, and this is going to make you <laughs> don't take a sip of beer. You're going to, you I'm got cheating. confidence in somebody? That got dumped by Danica Patrick. <laughs> he doesn't even like his mom. Dude. <laughs> hey, I hope he didn't that like his, whole. He, he I didn't like that, his mom last year, and still was thirteen and three, or whatever his record was. All right. No, he was not thirteen and three last year. Two years. The ago, Lions. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Dude, I hope the whole Aaron Rodgers experiment in New York crashes and burns all right hey let me ask you a question okay i got one let's finish with this honest opinion who has a better season rogers right now with the jets or when brett Favre went with the jets i don't know if you remember this but when brett Favre started with the jets they started out hot Okay, and by hot, I think they were like four and zero. And then they came; they brought their the ass down to Qualcomm on Monday Night Football <laughs> with Brett Favre. <laughs> and the only reason I can remember it is because Badger was in town, and he was at my <laughs> house, and we laid the wood to him. Uh, uh, okay, I don't know. What do you call success? Making the playoffs? Do you call success getting to the divisional round? Do you call success the the championship game for the conference? What do you call success? 
for him making the playoffs. Dude, there's three teams. There's yeah. two teams. Two teams can come out of the AFC East. It could be three. That's my point. Two or three teams can come out of the AFC North, too. And two or three teams can come out of the AFC West. The thing that. And one team will come out of the South. <laughs> and that's the Jaguars <laughs> that you and I both said the Colts last year. 100% no brainer. Yeah. How good were we? <laughs> I'm just going to say this the name that nobody's talking about okay in the afc east is the name of vic fangio the new defensive coordinator for the dolphins he's gonna i just don't want them to be good he's making a difference dude okay you know who i also forget if it's them ramsey ramsey's on the effing dolphins now Yes, I know. That's why we don't need Dalvin Cook to go there. Exactly. Dude. Hey. And you know we got him week hey. one, bro. We got him week one, and you're going to be there. Yeah. As long as five foot six two is playing, hopefully his, he pulls his 100%. vagina muscle and he gets hurt. But, dude. Look. Week one's always a crapshoot because teams know, are it figuring is. it out. So yeah. I think that's I, I think that's good for the Chargers, to be honest. Yeah, dude, on paper, Miami has it. They got the best roster in the league. I hate to say it, but on paper, they got it. So, but how often have we seen that work out? That's my point. Speaking of that, real quick, did you see what Mike Vick said about his time when he was with the Eagles? And what was the coach's name that came from UCLA that did the hurry up thing? And they tried to build the dream team. They got Nasama. What's the guy's name? They had Chip Kelly. Chip Kelly. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Did you see what Vic said about Chip Kelly? No. Dud. Oh, dude, him. Deshaun Jackson called him a bum. LaShawn McCoy called him a bum. Macklin. Remember the Macklin? (sighs) Yeah. God, that team was so good. Nasama back there. What was their Dawkins, their safety? Yeah, I know. To quote Jerry West, they, he was a dog. Okay, my bad, a wolf. But <laughs> <laughs> no, the wolf is better than the dog, bro. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to <laughs> throw something out there. But anyhow, <laughs> the fact that it's July and we're talking about the NFL has me excited, bro. Very. You have no idea. I am ready. For this NFL, I'm ready for fantasy. I'm ready to go back yeah. to the stadium. I'm ready to tailgate. I'm ready. Hey, I'm ready to see my Pittsburgh Steelers coming to town to lay that wood, as you like to say, to the Los Angeles Rams. But I'm excited. I can't wait. Dude, you know, my, back in the my day. Payments. Yeah. Back in the day when I lived in Southern California, a long time ago, before digital things, I got... <laughs> my season tickets in the mail and I used to always post it on Instagram and I'm like, it's like Christmas. Cause you got all I got all the tickets in the mail and I would be like, I wish I had tickets. I wish I got actual tickets. Right. And it was just like, Oh my God, it's Christmas in July. But anyhow, it's July training camps in two weeks. Let's go. If they were closer, I'd actually go. They for being a season ticket holder, I get like special. Oh, I can go to these practice balls, dude. I don't want to drive down. Yeah, Oxnard. No, Cowboys are in Oxnard. They play down in. Um, They're in Orange County. Orange County. I'm like, do I want to yeah. drive down to Orange County? Yeah. No, not really. Yeah, <laughs> folks. My, something my... thirty minutes away takes an hour and a half to drive to. Okay, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm not doing AKA, it. Aka twelve miles. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. One of my favorite times ever at Chargers training camp, I was on the way to pick up Kristen and the kids from Virginia when they were gone. And I hit up my boy and I'm like, hey, I think I'm going to come down to training camp. Can you hook it up? I'm going to come in. And he goes, yeah, I got you. And I got to park in the player's parking lot, got to go in. I was on the field and he gave me a tour of the old headquarters where the Chargers were. I got to go in the war room where they did the draft. It was insane. 
There's just that buzz, dude, about training camp. I might make it. I don't know. 32 teams. I got one of my favorite pictures was Ava and I down at training camp when she was just a little kid, obviously. Training camp's cool, dude. It's the beginning. No, I'm, I'm not it's saying the it's not. I, it's the beginning. Maybe, maybe maybe I'll call one of my homies up in Orange County and it's, take a drive. It's worth it. The first year I had season tickets for the Chargers, Buckeye was there. And Buckeye and I went down to the training camp, and I still have the hat. I got Rivers, Weddle, Merriman, Gates. All right, go. I gotta check. But, hey, I gotta check out the first round pick. I need to see if this receiver is worth not taking that stud linebacker or that stud safety. So we'll see. We'll see. But dude, lead us out, Graham. It's been a fun episode. It's only gonna get better. <laughs> this is July. We're in the Light. middle of July, and it's usually the time of the year that we're just like, eh, we're pulling at strings. What do we talk about? And right before we started this podcast, we said, hey, no, not we. I won't take the credit. It was you. You said, hey, Graham, this is going to be one of our better ones. We're going to have a good time, and it's going to be good. I'm like, eh, I don't know. And honestly, I had a blast, as always, but more of a blast tonight. We we had a bunch of smack yourselves. We said a lot of crazy things. We talked about beers. Jerry West playing at West Virginia. <laughs> Not only that, but we talked about Verlander motorboating. <laughs> How many episodes has that happened on? <laughs> on that note, get us out of here, bro. <laughs> hey, as the best homie always says, bye bye. You motorboating son of a. <laughs> Good night, friends. <laughs> <laughs>